BlackBerry 9000 was one of the first models in the Bolt family line of smartphones. It was developed by Research in Motion and was launched in May of 2008. The phone had many models following its initial release, which include the very popular 9900 and 9930 that was launched in 2011. So why am I making a video about a phone that old? I mean, it's 11 years old and it's been around for a long time and I don't think many people are using it. Although I am getting them in here and clearly people are still using them. Since I do a lot of Blackberries and I get a lot of them in here, um, I get a lot of these particular ones because these ones uh, use a bit different memory chip than um, the more recent models like the EMMC. Um, so I think it will be an inter interesting video to see how to recover data from these older legacy devices. So I think we should get to it. So here's the uh, BlackBerry 9000, uh, pretty classic look. And um, here's the back label which I use later to uh, look at the FCC ID um, to where the location of the memory chip is. But um, yeah, I'm gonna disassemble it and um, get to the um, most important part. I gotta keep that label uh, for um, case purposes, just so I have it. But anyways, chip is here, um, just here. So the next step uh, we're gonna do is we're gonna roll back the shield like I did in a previous video. So we usually start rolling it uh, like in my last video. I have to kind of catch the corner with uh, with my tools here. It's a little bit hard because the um, that chip is always sitting so close um, to the um, to the shield that the, there's a big risk of damaging the memory chip. And I'm really trying to avoid it because the last thing I want to do is call the customer, tell them, "Hey, damage your chip, no recovery." So we want to uh, be as careful as possible here. Uh, this one gave me more trouble than usual, uh, but I got it. And um, once they, I get the shield off, you can see the, it has some blue epoxy. Uh, this one's actually not, not as bad as the black one, but it's still bad and it still sucks and I don't like it. But you have to work with it. And here we are um, in the BGA rework machine. We're going to put some flux on it and start heating it up. Uh, this process was fairly quick. Uh, I actually use a different profile now for these chips uh, because the heat tolerance is again very very low so I have to keep the heat at a minimum for the short period as short as possible actually that's that's the whole plan so I'm just I'm not trying to pry the chip here I'm just trying to see how soft the epoxy is and here epoxy gave in so I was able to lift the chip and um, I actually came off pretty good so here's the chip it looks somewhat different uh, than what we used to. Uh, this is not an EMMC, this is EMCP. Um, this is actually a Movinan. This is a very old, old school type of chip. Um, I'm gonna get to schematics in a second, but um, I found the MCP specif specifications for this. So this is one gigabyte of storage, and then 128 megabyte of one NAND storage, and another 128 megabyte of RAM. So this is a, a, a little bit different package than EMMC chips. So what we really care about is the uh, one end, uh, which is the, where the, the data is stored for the BlackBerry speci specifically. So that we have to, that one single portion, the one in the middle. So here are the specs for this chip. And um, another important part is the, uh, the pinout. The pinout, we want the yellow ones. These chips are used in BlackBerry Storm and a few other ones that I've done. I've seen them uh, at the very, very beginning. I, I had to kind of figure out what kind of chip this is, but there isn't much information for these particular chips or the readers. That's the, this is the reader that we use. This is a up 828E uh, programmer. Um, this is the only one that I found that can actually read the chip. I know there's other methods of reading this chip, but uh, this is the one we use. And here's how we put it in the reader. Now, this is a little bit tricky because there's no like a cradle when it keeps the chip in position so i kind of have to push down on it a little bit see me pushing here my fingers i'm kind of what i'm doing here is i'm trying to kind of let the pins locate the uh, connection and you'll see in a screen in a minute uh how this was done and here we are with the uh, up and up programmer uh so what i do is i click check and it gives me um these red pins. So now as, as I was pushing on the chip, they start lighting up green. So what I want is good connection. It doesn't always work on the first try, but here it is. Worked on the first try. And then uh, the next step is to um, read the chip. 
yeah, chips fully detected, and now we can start the reading process. So what this does, it reads it into the memory. And as soon as it's done, we can, um, we can open it, and here it is. Now, very important to notice at the very beginning of this chip, it says HMIT. That is, that is very important. That, that portion is extremely important now, because what's going to happen is, when I save uh, a binary dump of this chip, that data will not be there. And that's going to cause all, all kinds of problems um, decoding the data later. So here I, here I am saving it. And now I'm going to open that chip in Hex Viewer and see that beginning of the chip is missing. It's actually not missing. It's there. It's, there's just extra garbage data that uh, uh, programmer saves. So you can see now I'm going to save these, this chip as a second copy. and I'm going to remove this entire section of the chip uh, in the binary data. And now it's gone. So now the dump is exactly as it should be. And here's some uh, just some string of text I searched for some some messages. I had to blue this out because it's personal data, so I can't really show it. But data is in here. So now we're gonna save it. And uh, here we are with the Celebrate UFED. We're gonna start a new case. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna load the. Um, the first dump that I've created, the one that's not corrected. And uh, what you'll see that is gonna happen is, Celebrate is gonna have problems decoding the data because of that uh, initial offset at the beginning of the, the binary dump, um, where the data shifted forward. So Celebrate is, is looking for specific information that it can't find, so it's not gonna decode anything. It's almost done here. And there it is, it's finished. There's nothing to show, there's no data. So let's start a new case again, uh, same way, except this time I'm gonna select the, uh, the corrected dump. There it is, and I'm gonna start decoding it. And here it is coming in right now. In a few seconds, you'll see that the file system um, is gonna light up as it didn't before. So the file system now will be found. And once the file system is found, um, Celebrate is going to continue on decoding the data and uh, showing everything that was recovered. And there's the file system and the data slowly coming in. And just like that, we got everything off this dead Blackberry that came in completely dead. And it's just finishing now, last step. And there it is. Anyways, thank you for watching. Uh, if you like this content, please subscribe and click like on this video. And I'll be making a new video very soon. Thank you for watching.